Hi, I'm Jonathan Emmett. I'm the author of Callum's Incredible Construction Kit and I'm also a pop-up designer and I'm going to show you how to make this simple Callum pop-up. Um, it's something that uh, I call a flick flack, it might have another name. And on this one there's a space on the front for you to draw your own Callum's Incredible Construction Kit. And then once you've done that you can do something rather incredible with it because it's not just an ordinary piece of paper. With an ordinary piece of paper uh, you could turn it upside down or you could turn it back to front but with most ordinary pieces of paper the one thing you can't do is turn them inside out which is exactly what you can do with this one. So starting with the picture that you draw at the front you can open it up and you can see that there's another picture inside which you can also colour if you want to. It's a picture of Callum on the beach and that picture also opens up to show another picture inside. This one's Callum on the back of the dinosaur that he makes. And that picture also opens up and you get a picture of the front cover. And that picture also opens up and you're back to where you started with the picture that you've drawn. Okay, so that's how it works and I'm going to show you how to make it. Now, the first thing you need to do is to um, print it out onto some card. And I, if you can print it out onto card, that will be much better. Um, don't put really thick card through your printer if your printer is not meant to print on thick card. But most printers will take a fairly thin card. So whatever you think you can put through safely, use that. And the way this um, PDF has been designed, is a, you'll see when you download it, there is a front and a back. Obviously, you print the front sheet first onto one side. And then when you take the paper out, you turn it around and feed it back through and print the back sheet. And if you've got it the right way round, you should find that when you've got the front facing you, these black and white words, Callum's Incredible Construction Kit, are at the top of the page and when you turn it over, this square, it's got a QR symbol, is also at the top of the page. Okay, so when you turn it over that way, Callum's Incredible Construction Kit, turn it back, it's got the little square QR symbol with the three little black squares in the corner of it. It needs to be that way up to work, so that's quite important. Now I'll show you how to print it and how to make sure that you get the front and the back lined up perfectly. When you're printing on both sides of the card, you can get confused as to which way to feed the card into the printer to print the reverse side. So here's a tip to help you get it right the first time. Before you put the card into the printer, use a pen or pencil to draw a little cross on one corner. There it is. Then when you feed the card into the printer the first time, make sure that the side of the card with a cross on it is facing you and the edge with the cross on it is the first edge to go into the printer. Most printers have a paper guide that you can slide across, so make sure that that's snug up against the side of your card. Now you can press the print button on your computer to print side one only. Once you've printed the first side, when you feed the card into the printer to print the reverse, make sure that the side of the card with a cross on it is on the side that's not facing you, but the edge with the cross on it still needs to be the first edge to go into the printer. With my printer, the cross always appears on the first side you print out, but with yours it might be the other way around. But as long as you keep to this rule about turning the card over and feeding in the edge with the cross first, the reverse side should be in the right place and the right way up. If you've printed the reverse the right way around, the QR symbol here, should be on the reverse side of this Callum lettering. Once you've printed both sides of your card, you can check that the two sides are lined up with each other using the crosses printed on the card. These are called registration marks. If you hold the card up to a window or a strong light, you should be able to see through it. If the sides are printed in the right position, the printed crosses should be directly over each other so it will look like there is only one cross, as it does here. The second pair of crosses near the other corner are slightly misaligned, so you can see the fainter cross on the reverse side is slightly beneath the one on the front, but it's only a couple of millimetres out, which is close enough for what we need. 
If the crosses are more than 4mm out of line with each other, you might want to try printing the sheet out again. OK, so hopefully now you've printed it out of card and you've checked that it's lined up using the little registration marks. But um, if you've tried to do that and you just can't get it to line up properly, you just, your printer just doesn't seem to be playing ball, don't worry, you can still make, make the, um, the flick flack. And the way that you can do that is you can print it out into two sheets of paper or two sheets of card, print one with that side and print on the second sheet that side. Then just cut out the rectangle for the flick flack. You can see around the outside on that side and it's a red line on this side. Cut out around those two outlines and then just stick one onto the other. But again, make sure if you have to do that, make sure that Callum's Incredible Construction Kit is on the opposite side to the QR symbol so that it works okay. Once you have the sheet printed out, the first thing you need to do is score in the folds. Scoring means pressing a dent into the paper to make it easy to fold in the right place. I usually use this clutch pencil for scoring. Instead of a graphite lead, it's got a piece of copper wire in it, but you can use anything that's got a good point on it, providing the point isn't sharp enough to cut or tear the card, and it doesn't leave a mark on the card. You could use a knitting needle, for instance. An old ballpoint pen like this one makes an excellent scoring tool. You can use any old gel pen or biro, such as this one, but you need to make sure that it doesn't have any ink left in it, so that it doesn't mark the paper. So we need to put the folds in, and we're going to need a straight edge rule to put it on. So I'm going to put them in now. Now here's a tip: um, when you're putting a crease in, don't put the ruler right on the fold. If you put it right up against the side of the fold, when you press it in, the fold will be slightly to one side. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to put the pen onto the fold and then we move the ruler next to it and there's a tiny gap between the pen and the ruler and we put the pen down here and we check that it's the same and then we can put the folds in. Okay, so it's fold number one. Fold number two. Turn it the other way, and I'm going to do the other four, and I'm just going to set this up. Make sure you leave the gap. There the folds are all in. Now I need to cut it out. So cutting it out really carefully. You just need to cut carefully around the red rectangular line around the outside of the piece to start with. Let's jump ahead to where it's finished. Make sure you have the card this way up. You should be able to see three more red cuts that we need to make. Here, here, and here. This would be easy with a craft knife, but we can still do it with scissors if we fold the paper first. Folds are printed in green on the paper. Fold in fold one and fold two. The edges of the card should meet in the centre. Open both folds out again, then fold in folds 3 and 4. This time, the edges of the card should line up with folds 1 and 2. 
Once you've done all four folds, turn the card over and fold them back the other way. This is to make the folds more flexible. Now we're ready to put in the last three cuts. The longest cut is done in two parts. Fold the paper along fold three and turn it so this side is facing upwards. Now use the scissors to cut exactly along the red line until it meets the other red line. If you open the card out again you'll see that you have the first half of the cut done. Now fold the card along fold four and cut carefully along the red line until you meet the other red line again. When you open the card out again you should find that you have the complete cut. When you're using scissors the two remaining cuts also need to be done in two halves. Make sure you have the paper the right way around and start by cutting this half of this cut here. Make sure you don't cut any further than the end of the red line. This is also where the two green fold lines meet. If you try to cut the other half from this side you'll find that you can't do it accurately as the thickness of the scissors stops you from cutting exactly along the line. However if you turn the paper over and cut the other half from the other side you should find that you can cut exactly along the line. The second cut is now complete. Repeat this process for the final cut, remembering to cut the two halves of the cut from different sides. You should now have an H shaped hole like this in the middle of the card. Carefully fold in folds 5, 6, 7 and 8. The card should end up in this shape. Now fold the same folds the other way to make them more flexible. Flatten the card out again and make sure that this side is facing upwards. I usually make my pop-ups using a strong paper glue like this one but you can use a weaker, solvent-free glue like Pritt instead. Just put a small dab of glue onto each of the four glue points that are marked glue here. Then fold over fold one and press down where you've glued and do the same for fold two. And your flick flack is finished and ready to use. Keep opening the flick flack out from the center. You should see four different images before you get back to where you started. You can colour in your flick flack before or after you've cut and folded it.